What is going on guys? Welcome to your second chemistry tutorial and in this tutorial since we already covered what matter is we can begin discussing how matter can change states and I'm not talking about matter getting up and moving to California because it got in a fight with its brother I'm saying that matter can change states between solids, liquids, gases and there's something called plasma but we won't worry about that until like the 30th tutorial so anyways a solid isn't always stuck as a solid. It can become a liquid or even a gas. So that's why I said solids, whenever they convert to liquids, you guys probably already know this, it's called melting. The easiest example is an ice cube turning into water. Whenever that happens, the process is called melting. My ice cubes melted and someone's unhappy about it. Now my drink's warm. So the temperature that this, it's different for every substance, but the temperature that a substance can melt or will melt is called the melting point for that substance. So furthermore, whenever you have a piece of ice and you heat it up, the particles in that piece of ice, let's go ahead and say this is a piece of ice right here. The particles in that piece of ice are jam packed together. But when you go ahead and heat it up, those particles are going to gain energy and they're going to start shaking and going crazy. And eventually, they're going to get so much energy, they're going to start breaking apart from each other. And whenever they break apart, they're kind of doing their own thing, flowing freely. And they might be a little bit clumped together, but they aren't stuck together like the solid anymore. So that's what happens. Whenever you add energy, and we'll talk about energy later on, but whenever you add energy to a solid, the particles shake, and once they shake enough, they break apart until they become a liquid. So that's the process of melting, and if you want some uh, fun facts, I guess, the melting point for ice is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, or zero degrees Celsius. Pretty interesting, huh? So now let's go ahead and talk about the boiling point. And you guys may understand this, but there's probably going to be a couple of things that I need to touch on. So whenever you have a liquid and it goes to a gas, this process is called boiling. For example, if you had a pot of water and you heated it up until it became steam, that would be called boiling the water. You guys probably already know about this from making macaroni and cheese when you were a kid. You just didn't have these cool arrows and stuff. So typically... And I say typically because there are some exceptions, which we're going to be talking about later on. Typically, the process is solid to liquid to gas. In this example, I took a piece of ice. It, you would heat it up, and it would become water. And if you heated up that water, it would become steam. But check it out. All of this is all water still. It's just in different states. Ice is technically water. Water is, of course, water. And steam is technically water. It's just a gas form of it. So how do scientists and chemists distinguish between these three whenever they're writing it on paper? Well, what they do is if they have a substance and they want to determine what state it's in, they just write S, L, or G in parentheses. So this would be H2O solid, which would be ice, H2O liquid, which would be water, or I say water, it's all technically water, but an H2O G, which would mean gas, and this would be the steam of ice. In another fun fact, the boiling point for water is 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. So if we went ahead and looked at whenever you heated up water, see water is all kind of clumped together sliding around the particles right now, and you heated it up enough and gave it enough energy, these particles would just go effing crazy. They would be bouncing all over the place, kind of all doing their own random thing. So this is what happens whenever you give energy drinks to kids and also apply energy to water. So remember that, parenting tips and chemistry lessons all in one for free, thenewboston.com. So now there's only one other thing, well, actually two other things, but I won't spoil the surprise till the end. The freezing point is whenever you take a gas and convert it to a liquid. So now we're going in the other direction. We have that something that has a lot of energy and we're taking some energy away. So whenever we have a gas and we turn it back into a liquid, it's called condensation. And whenever we have a liquid and we turn it into a solid, it's called freezing. So basically, whenever you cool down water, it's going to eventually become a solid ice. So whenever you take the energy away, the particles are going to get closer and closer together until they're tightly packed together again. So whenever you apply energy to something, the particles are going to go crazy. Whenever you take energy away, the particles are going to get closer together. Again, we'll talk about energy later on. But uh, 
yeah, just want to say that. And by the way, I'm not going to give you the freezing temperature and the uh, boiling temperature because they're the same as pretty much what I'm saying is the freezing points and the condensation points are the same as the melting and boiling points. You get what I'm saying? At 100 degrees, all the same stuff happens except in reverse. So you may be thinking, okay, I see what's going on here. Solid to liquid to gas, done with this tutorial. But hold on, you notice that there's some time left on this YouTube video, and that's for this little baby right here. Bam! Sublimation, my favorite thing. This is when substances go directly from solids to gases. Pretty weird, huh? So an example of this that you guys can probably picture is dry ice. If you ever went to a magic show when you're a little kid, or maybe, you know, recently I guess they have this like block of dry ice and it's like this white block and it just emits steam from it well that steam is actually a gas and that what's happening is that matter is going through something called sublimation that solid is turning directly into a gas skipping the middle liquid state right here so it pretty much skips this thing right here and converts straight to a gas another example of this that you might see more often is if you ever had a house that was really smelly and you bought one of those air fresheners that it was like kind of like a gel and you opened it a little bit and it smelled if you opened it more it made your whole room smell next time you're like at the grocery store look for those those gels they don't convert to a liquid before turning into a gas they pretty much go directly from a solid a gel to a gas which makes your room smell nice Hopefully. If your room's like really smelly and you have like dirty bologna sandwiches under your bed, then there's no use. You got to clean it. But if, you know, it's just a little smelly, then you can go ahead and get them. That's what I do. <laughs> so anyways, um, nice little fun factoid. The re reverse of this whenever gases go directly to solid is called deposition. But we don't really talk about that because, you know, sublimation is just such a m more fun word to say. And sublime is one of my favorite bands. So anyways, that's all I'm going to ramble about for this tutorial. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.